He is a member of the Law Society of Upper Canada and married and has a daughter and a granddaughter. Please welcome Chris Topple. So candidates, you have uh, two minutes um, for your opening remarks, um, and I will uh, warn you within 10 seconds or so of uh, running out of that time. So our first candidate, uh, again, in order of draw, is Chris Topple. Well, thank you very much, and I'd like to thank all of you for coming out tonight, and thank the Refuge for this wonderful gathering. We're so close to each other. As you can tell from the introduction, I have a, a long history in Oshawa. I've lived here all my life graduate of Durham College locally and also York University. For the past 24 years, I have been helping people who are injured, ill, and distressed. This involved working for the Member of Parliament and the Member of Provincial Parliament, helping people with casework when they came off the street many times with no appointment. For the past 19 years, I have again represented such people to various provincial and federal tribunals, assisting them with their cases. So this is the kind of work where the rubber hits the road, where you're dealing with people who are distressed, you're dealing with people who are injured and ill, you have to deal with bureaucrats in government, very difficult at times, you have to know people, and you have to know law and policy. Now, one of my colleagues who's been running for mayor uses the expression that this is not an entry-level position, and I agree fully with that statement. You must have a background that will qualify you to be mayor. Well, I submit that after doing this kind of work for 24 years, I believe it has prepared me and given me the transferable skills to be a good mayor in this city. I believe in thoroughness, openness, and truthfulness. And the way I've run my business is exactly how I've run as mayor, seeking coalitions and alliances to do all the tasks necessary to make this a great city and improve the lives of everyone. Thank you. John Gray. Good evening. Well, the city's had some problems in this last four years. Let's examine some of the highlights. A $25 million works depot project that should have been modest in scope, but instead they bought an office building to convert to a maintenance facility, allegedly paying $1.6 million too much. But the most important thing is, they could have just released the appraisals and we would have been able to make it, been the judge of that. They instead, they hired a consultant who worked for three months, had three weeks of vacation, and charged $113,000 and didn't even do a thorough investigation. And still, there's no business plan. They terminated the position of the Auditor General who criticized that purchase, the taxpayer's watchdog who saved the taxpayers $5 million in the first in first year savings. Having rung up a record deficit of 1.7 million in the first quarter of this year, they only informed the public October the 2nd. And we've got to remember, deficits are illegal. They've raided reserves, and they dismissed the threat of GM closing its doors. And they tried to sell our public utility. We need to ask ourselves, are we better off today than four years ago? We need to take the initiative tackle problems head on and get this city on track. As mayor, I will make economic development my number one priority, including leading a community effort to retain GM. We need jobs for our citizens, young and old, and give the homeless dignity. Our strongest partner in economic development is the private sector. Let the private sector invest in our community from harbor lands to downtown and the 407 employment lands. We also need to invest in our homeless and at-risk youth by supporting facilities and programs to enhance their life skills, to increase employability. Ten seconds. Homeless numbers are on the rise and we need, this is reflective of our society today. I look forward to the further questions on this topic as we explore how to fix that problem in Oshawa. Thank you. Rosemary Good evening. I'd like to thank you, Clarence, for having the initiative to organize this event for this evening. And I think it's an opportunity right now to maybe talk to the people here and say, who's, who's willing to volunteer and, and help out with this facility? Because I think what's going on here is something wonderful and very needed. 
And now that you know it's here, I hope uh, parents will get some phone calls, emails, and assistance in the future. Uh, a little bit. About myself, I have been before city and region council, I think more than anyone in the history of the city or region. In fact, no, I've not been on council before, not been elected, but in fact, I have the skill set to go forward uh, with this top job where I can be most effective. In fact, uh, I, I've heard, uh, as uh, you heard repeated here tonight, that uh, it's not an entry-level position. I don't have entry-level qualifications. I have above and beyond, and I'm quite prepared and committed to make the changes that are necessary in this city. In fact, the reason I'm running is because I believe there are serious problems that need to be addressed. And my platform has been the finances of the city, improving the city's image, and engaging and participating citizens in the decision-making process. I think that's key to democracy in Canada. And that's where I want to concentrate for my a short time here tonight, uh, citizen engagement. I am, um, I think, uh, more than anyone uh, uh, on this panel have been uh, blocked and censored uh, in speaking um, both in this past administration and the previous administration. That sort of thing shouldn't happen. I think citizens need to be welcomed in City Hall and not tackled by undercover police. And unfortunately, um, on the topic of uh, homelessness,